Hey, this is the Swedish Katarnard, and today I'm taking a look at the Ibanez SC420. Well, back in the late 80s, early 90s, Ibanez was trying to create something new, and uh, well, they got a big help from Mr. Steve Vai, and that collaboration is still going on. Um, but they introduced some other new models as well, and there were three in particular. One was the Power power model and uh, you can I think you can see it in the video for uh, always with me always with you with Joe Satriani and on some of his record covers as well but other than that uh, it's faded into the oblivion but there were two models that actually still are in production and exist today and one is the radius which coincidentally became the Joe Satriani model uh, that you can see today. And uh, and the third was the Sabre model or the S-series that still is made today. It was very popular uh, among fusion guitarists when it came out. Uh, it was super speedy technical guys like Scott Henderson and uh, Frank Gambale, for instance. And this still popular today. We have artist models from metal and rock guitars like Herman Lee from Dragon Force. And of course, Nita Strauss model is based on an S-series guitar. But in the mid-90s to the late 90s, well, uh, it wasn't really that cool anymore for some reason that to have like neon colored guitars like bright pink and bright yellow and the thing that basically Ibanez had such success with in the late 80s early 90s and everyone wanted to look uh, dark and brown and gray and boring um, and uh, a, a company that actually succeeded very well in this area was a company that mm, put together the modern aspects of baking guitars with traditional aesthetics. And that was the PRS, uh, the Paul Reed Smith guitar company. And they were really popular. And Ibanez, of course, looked at them and created something that's, uh, well, I, I think it's trying to be a PRS guitar in many ways. And I'll get back to that when I talk about the actual parts and how it's constructed. Uh, but well, first, let's mention the body. Uh, it says S S C, so it's a version of the S series, but it's so slim. That's the thing. So it's crazy. But this is a variation. The the original or the actual S series are. I think it's even slimmer in the body, and the necks are, of course, Ibanez necks. And this is something different. Well, let's talk about this guitar then, the SC420, which was the base model in this series. It's a S Custom, that's the SC. Uh, made in Japan, this is the entry level, this is the affordable one, but it's still made in Japan, so it's kind of fancy. Well, let's start at the top, and you get a headstock that has. Well, it has the Ibanez shape, it's something like it. But if you turn it upside down, it really looks like another company's headstock. Especially with a tuner's place like this. Which is smart, by the way. If you're gonna have three aside tuners, let's do it this way. And PRS really got that. Because now we got straight string pull it's just straight it's not pointing in any direction like on a gibson guitar we have goto tuners of course it's an ibanez japan model and for some reason they have these brown orange perloid buttons and it's kind of weird i don't know what they were thinking there we have a maple neck, and it's, as I said, it's not the Ibanez standard. It's more like a slim fender style neck, maybe. It's, yeah, it 
doesn't feel super thin, but it's slim, all right. But no, it's not Ibanez super thin. Um, and a 12 inch rosewood fretboard. And the actual uh, truss rod cover is made from rosewood as well. There's a lot of rosewood there. That's horrible, but that's the way it is. Um, not that super jumbo frets either that you might find on a shred uh, Ibanez from the early 90s. The neck is, and here the PRS comparison continues, it's a 25.1 inch scale. Uh, and Ibanez has never done anything like that before or after. So it's not the Gibson scale, it's not the Strat scale, it's the PRS scale that's usually 25 exactly. So yes, obviously they were mimicking PRS there as well. The body is mahogany, as I think most of the S series guitars are. Um, they have this uh, reveal binding. It's just you can see the wood through here. But there's another company that make that made that really popular. And yeah, guess which company that was. Um, I have a wraparound bridge, very much like that company has on most of their models. On this one, it's. I would say this is a preferred one because you can actually intonate this one to your preferences. But it's a very solid unit. It's proper Japanese stuff, everything. Um, since it's a very slim body, they wanted to keep as much of the wood as possible. So uh, in the back, you can see there's not much cavities going on. It's this one for the output jack and that's it. So how did they manage to do this? Well, they um, <laughs> made this funny plastic surroundings for the electronics. So the actual, the, the fire switch sits on a plastic surrounding, the volume and tone knob sits on a plastic surrounding. So it's just a hole in the front and nothing more. And of course, the S style output. So, well, it works. I don't know if it's the most beautiful uh, design and, and what would it have made for the difference if you had taken out, just made a, a compartment in the back. I don't know. Well, it works. Uh, we have a V1 and a V2 pickup from Ibanez uh, and Compared to the V7, V8, they usually have on their rock metal guitars. Uh, these are, of course, made to be more vintage in output and sound. And uh, yeah, that fits the guitar, I think. So, well, why not? We have a very comfort, a very contoured comfort uh, axis heel. So it's no problem reaching the highest frets. It's just a 22 fret guitar. So, well, no problems at all. So that's a great design. So yeah, great guitar, I think. Jumbo, super big strap buttons as well. You don't need strap locks on this one. I think if you aren't that uncareful. Uh, okay, well, let's hear it then. Uh, we have two pickups, two humbuckers, but as it's an Ibanez and they, this is actually something I think Ibanez should take credit for using these uh, super switches or yeah, multi switches. It's not just like combinations of the pickups as they are, it's combinations of the actual coils and how they are. Um, yeah, wired. So in the bridge position, and I have a clean sound down. I think it's, uh, you can hear it the most uh, when it's completely clean. You have, uh, this is the full V2 humbucker. And then, the next position is the two 
inner coils, the two inner coils of the humbuckers. So it sounds like this. Compared to the humbucker. In the middle you have the two humbuckers together, so it's something like this. And the next position is the neck humbucker, but the coils are, instead of having them serial, in series, serial, in series, they are in parallel. And so it's, uh, I will compare the two actually, because of course the last position is the humbucker in series. So here, maybe I should start with that one. Here is in full blast series mode. And in parallel. So you get five very different uh, sounds actually, at least on a clean sound. If you turn the distortion up, it basically sounds the same, all of them. But with a clean and not so high gain sound, it's very different. The sounds are very different, so it makes it a very versatile guitar. You can do a lot of things with it. It's not just a one trick, one trick pony. Yeah, I'm gonna turn up the gain and uh, yeah, try to play around and Try the different pickup positions and see what it does to the sound. Finally, I've added even more gain, and now, uh, as I said, the differences between the pickup positions starts to get blurred. It sounds basically the same. So I will only use the bridge pickup and the neck pickup as on full blast. Uh, so the outer limits of the pickup switch. So here it is. This has been the Switch Guitar Nerd demoing uh, Ibanez SC420. Plays great, the action super low and it's really comfortable in all ways. The neck is really nice to play, the access to the high frets is really easy and the body is so ergonomically, it's like so comfortable. And all the parts are top notch. This model only existed for a, a few years and then was discontinued and uh, actually when you find these they are usually rather affordable. I don't know, maybe people think that PRS makes better PRS guitars, I don't know. 
but it's a great guitar made in japan really good parts the tunes are amazing uh, it plays really nice it's got super low action it's, the sounds of it are really good it's a really good guitar actually so yeah this has been swedish guitar nerd see you soon <laughs>